guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nays Nays, for those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video. And I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday all about my faith, God of Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. So, today's video, as the title says below, is going to be the announcement for the 2020 Daughter of Increase Reading Challenge. And basically, what this is, is going to be 52 weeks of intentional faith-based reading. Um, and I talked about this at the beginning of 2019, but I didn't really elaborate on it further, and I personally didn't keep up with it. I know a lot of you ladies have kept up with it, which I think is great. But for 2020, I want to be intentional about keeping up with it and actually going along with it. So, if you guys don't remember seeing this little thing, I did switch up the picture, of course. Um, but this is what it looks like. The document is just two pages, front and back. Um, and I did switch up some of the prompts. But it's basically 52 weeks, so I'm going to actually just read what it says because it just makes sense to read it. Um, so what is it and why you should join? So are you trying to get into reading more this coming year? Do you love to read? Or do you want to become more intentional in your reading? Do you want to grow in Christian maturity in 2020? Then join the Daughter of Increase 52-Week Reading Challenge. This is going to be a Christian-based reading challenge for any member or follower of Daughter of Increase and or follower of Christ. So you don't have to be a subscriber to Daughter of Increase. You don't have to be a follower of Daughter of Increase. If you are a Christian, if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, you can join in on this challenge, okay? All right. <laughs> so this is for those who desire to be more intentional in their reading to expand their faith. So... Again, I didn't really read a lot of Christian fiction like a year, two years ago now. Um, I was more so into reading my erotic novels and um, just sticking to secular books. When I started diving into Christian fiction, you guys, and biblical fiction, my whole world changed. Like, my whole insight on the Bible changed. Everything just changed and the Bible became more real and more relatable for me. I love Christian fiction for the simple fact that it helps me to give these biblical people humanity and a lot of the times what i mean by that is we look at moses and david and abraham and solemn solomon um we look at these people like they're like you know we, we can't be like them but when you really dive in and really study who they are and really get to know them as humans you really begin to understand that they were just regular people regular people that lived out their faith they made mistakes they sinned i mean david was out here killing people he was having affairs like come on now just saying they're humans so i feel like through the biblical fiction and Christian fiction books that I've been reading, they've been helping me to build on my faith. And obviously the same thing with my Christian nonfiction books. I'm not a nonfiction reader. Personally, can't stand nonfiction. But for some reason, Christian nonfiction has really been, been helping me a lot. And I started out with Fervent, then I, Fervent by Priscilla Shire, excuse me, and then I did Cling by Kim Cash Tate. I read, um... Running from Mercy, I think it's called, by Anthony J. Carter, which is about Jonah. Love that book. Like, there are so many books out there that really can help you build and grow on your faith and help you study the Word of God. But many times we don't know that because we don't tend to look for it or really pay attention. So that was me. But um, what to expect. So there are going to be 52 prompts to help you pick from that will edify you. From biblical fiction to nonfiction, from fantasy to contemporary all the books should be Christian or faith-based books. You can pick prompts that appeal to you. One book can accomplish multiple prompts. And then the goal for this is just to read, have fun, and be intentional in your reading. So there are going to be four different levels. And I'm doing four levels because some people like to challenge themselves. I love reading challenges. That's just me. I always have a challenge for myself on how many books that I want to read. For the year of 2020, I want to challenge myself to read 40 Christian books. Whether that's biblical fiction, Christian fiction, or Christian nonfiction, I want to challenge myself to read 40. I normally read anywhere from 100 to 200 books in a year, and those 100 to 200 books are mostly, normally, secular books. So if I can take in that many secular books, um, and if I make my reading go 80 books this month, this year, excuse me, coming up, um, I want half of those books to be Christian-related. So... That is my goal, but um, again, some people like challenges, some people like help. So for level one, it's going to be one book every four weeks. So you'll be reading a total of 13 books for the year. If you do level two, you're going to be reading one book every two weeks, which is going to amount to 26 books total. And then if you do level three, that's going to be one book every week, which is 52 books for the year. So that means you would have read either 13 books that are Christian related for the year, 26 for the year or 52 for the year and then you have level four which is free spirit read you can read as many books as you want it doesn't matter so we have that 
So moving on to the prompts. I switched up the prompts slightly um, just because I felt like switching it up. <laughs> but um, all types of media is accepted, be it ebook, audiobook, or paperback, physical, hardcover, or whatever. Any type of book is is your choice. Um, so I don't, because I know a lot of people say that audiobooks are not like books, but if audiobooks work for you, that's fine. I know for me, Christian fic Christian nonfiction sometimes is better to hear audio wise, but um, it all depends on you. So whether you have a physical book, an ebook, or audiobook, it's all accepted for this, okay? The point is just to have fun. And I'm also suggesting that if you're reading Christian nonfiction, annotate your books they it helps you so much more when you're annotating christian nonfiction. same thing with your christian fictions biblical fictions annotate i'm big on annotating i think annotating helps a lot so we have that um but again there are 52 prompts i'm gonna run through the prompts um i'm not gonna do any book recommendations <laughs> but what i'm gonna do is in my monthly wrap-up videos i'm going to go back to this and see which prompts i've completed if that makes sense so the first prompt is to read a book about prayer. The second is to read a book about forgiveness. The third is to read a book on beauty. The fourth is to do a Bible study workbook. So it doesn't matter what type of Bible study you have. I have thousands, thousands, thousands of Bible studies. And most of the time I start them but never fully finish them. I think I've probably finished maybe two fully, like fully completed two of my Bible study workbooks, which is bad. So we need to get on that. Um, the fifth one is to read a 2020 release. Um, and if you guys don't know any 2020 releases, I'll tell you now. Daughter of Rome is coming out by Miss Tessa Abshaw on February 4th. Then you have Misu Andrews' Isaiah's Legacy coming out on February 18th. You have Morgan L. Bussey's Cry of the Raven coming out also on February 4th. I mean, there are so many great books. I know Jill Eileen Smith has a book called Star of Persia, I believe, coming out. Um, there, there, there are a lot of 2020 releases, so I'm just, I'm just... I'm just giving you guys some. So, yeah. All right. <laughs> um, the sixth one is to read a middle grade Christian book. And the reason why I put that on there is because I actually found that I read a middle grade biblical fiction this year and really enjoyed it a lot. Um, it wasn't a five star read, but I definitely enjoyed it enough to give it four stars. And I really want to read more middle grade. So we have that as a pick or a prompt. Excuse me. The seventh is to read a book on biblical womanhood. The eighth is to read a devotional. The ninth is to read a young adult Christian book. The tenth is to read a book that was turned into a movie or a TV show. So I know that you have um, War Room is actually a book that you can actually read. You also have the one that just came out. Oh my God, I can't remember the title, but it'll be here. That picture of the book and the cover of the movie is here. But Overcomer, that's what it's called, Overcomer, but still it's there. Um, that's actually a book and a movie that came out. So you can do that. So anything that's a book... That was turned into a movie or TV show. Read that. Um, 11 is read a book by C.S. Lewis. 12 is a book with the word gospel in the title. So any book that has the word gospel. Be it fictional or non-fiction. Um, 13 is to read a recent purchase. 14 is a book someone said changed their life. So if you're like in conversation with someone and someone recommends a book to you, all right, like I, I recommend Fervent and Cling all the time because it literally changed my perspective in my life. So that would be like a great book for you guys to read if you haven't read it already. But um, read a recommendation from someone that said, read a book someone said changed their life. So pretty much that's it. Um, 15 is to read a book by A.W. Tozer. 16 is a book by your favorite Christian author. 17 is a book on marriage. 18 is a book longer than 400 pages. So I have one for a fact. So we have this one, which is A Lineage of Grace by Francine Rivers. You can read that one. There's also the male version, which I think is Sons of Encouragement that she has, which I believe is also over 400 pages. And then you have The Robe by Lloyd C. Douglas, which let me grab that quickly for you guys. But, um... We have The Road by Lloyd C. Douglas, which is definitely over 400 pages. <laughs> so you can go with those as an option. Number 19 is a book you own but have never read. So, you know, those books that we buy and keep on our shelves but never really get a chance to read one of those books. Um, <laughs> a book about a current controversial issue. So it can be anything about um, LGBTQIA anything about abortions, anything about, um, 
don't know, anything just controversial, read a Christian nonfiction book or a Christian fiction book about it. Um, and again, that is definitely up to you on what kind of book you want to read. That is your choice. So you pick that book. Um, for me, I'm going to read, um, Gay Girl, Good God. I think that's what it's called. I'll put the book title here, the cover here. That book, I own it. I have yet to read it and I really want to read it. So I'm going to read that book. Um, because LGBTQIA is sort of a controversial issue in the world in general, as well as within the Christian community. Um, so I definitely want to read that book and see what it's about. Um, then the 21st, the 21st prompt is to read a book on singleness. Then you have 22, which is a book with one word title. 23 is a book more than 100 years old or takes place more than 100 years ago. So if this is biblical fiction, it can be a book that took place around the Exodus. Or if it's nonfiction, it can be, again, a classic by C.S. Lewis or something like that. 24 is to read a book published in 2019. 25 is a YouTube recommendation. 26 is a book about joy or happiness. 27, I put an urban Christian fiction novel. Um, and when I say urban Christian fiction novel, I mean read a Christian fiction book written by a black author. So that can be someone like Kim Cache. She does write Christian fiction. Um, I have never read any of her books. I know Steph has read her books and enjoyed them, so I definitely want to dive into that. But um, there are a lot of black authors out there who do write Christian fiction. And I put it like that because a lot of the times biblical fiction is not written by a person of color. And I definitely personally want to expand my um, sort of reading by reading urban fiction, um, urban Christian fiction, excuse me. So I hope that made sense. Hope you guys understood what I just said, but yeah. Um, I will have a link down below for you guys to click on for some Christian fiction authors that are black. So we have that. Um, then we have 28, a book whose title comes from a Bible verse. 29 is a book on theology. 30 is a biblical fiction novel. 31 is a book on a woman from the Bible. 32 is a book on a man from the Bible. Um, 33 is a book about church or a specific church. 34 is a book with heaven in the title, 35 is a Christian romance novel, 36 is read and watch a book to movie adaptation. Now that can go hand in hand with prompt number 10, which was a book that was turned into a movie. So say if I read Overcomer, I can then go and watch the movie Overcomer and that's two prompts checked off. Um, War Room, you can read it and then watch it. Check that off, okay? So pretty much that's that. So keep in mind, a lot of these prompts can be done with one book, okay? One book can literally satisfy like 10 prompts, just saying. Um, then the next one is to 37, which is read a book on spiritual warfare. 38 is to read a book by Dr. Tony Evans. I think Dr. Tony Evans is amazing. He is the father of Priscilla Shire, as well as Anthony Evans, who is a gospel singer. I love all of them, they're amazing. Um, and even his daughter, I think it's Crystal Hurst. Uh, Crystal Hurst, yeah, she's also an author, so she's great as well. Um, 39 is to watch a faith-based movie. Again, that coincides with 36 in Prompt 10. But again, this can be any type of movie. You can watch um, The Prince of Egypt. I most likely will. Um, you can watch War Room. You can watch Grace Card. So many great movies. I'm going to do a whole... I don't think, I think I did a video on my favorite christian based movies i think i said i was but i never did so i'm gonna have that as a recommendation video for january 40 is a book by a christian author you never read before so that could be an author that you just popped that that just popped up on your timeline or popped up on instagram or on goodreads just an, a, a new to you author that's christian based there you go um <laughs> the 41st is a book from any of the Goodreads Christian book lists, and I will leave a link to those book lists down below. Um, I'm gonna try to find all of them, but any type of Christian based Goodreads list, read one of those books. Um, 42 is a book about a book in the Bible. 43 is a book by a mainstream biblical fiction author. Mainstream being Connie Lynn Cassette, Angela Hunt, Me Sue Andrews, Tessa Afshar. Um, Jill Eileen, those are mainstream biblical fiction authors to me because you can literally go to a bookstore and find their books on the shelves. So any biblical fiction author you can find in a bookstore on a bookshelf is mainstream to me. Um, the 44th is to a Christ read a Christian fiction book with a beautiful cover. So any Christian fiction book you have that has like a stunning cover on it, read it. 
um 45 is a book with 100 pages or less which that could be hard but then again how many pages is this? i don't think this counts does this count no that has 200 pages i don't have one on me like right now oh here we go i do have one right next to me so this book here um i don't know this is less than 100 pages it doesn't really say but i'm gonna go with this one um it's 31 days with god for mothers encouraging devotion prayers and quotations um i think this is less than 100 pages if not then you know sorry but any book that is less than 100 pages 100 pages or less read that um so that can be a small devotional um that can be even the little pamphlets you get from like our daily bread discovery series those little pamphlets are less than 100 pages so that counts okay um the 46 is to read a historical fiction novel 47 is a book on love and this is not self-love but on love in general so like loving others loving god love and marriage but not self-love hope that makes sense um and I'm, I'm being very specific about that because um i want i'm 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 gonna be very adamant about love in 2020 so i just i wanted to put that as a prompt um 48 is a book by Ted Decker. The reason why I put Ted Decker is because a lot of the times when I think of Christian fantasy books um, or Christian sci-fi, I think Ted Decker and I think his books are great. I recently read um, The Girl Behind the Red Rope by him and his daughter. Oh my god, that book was amazing. That book was amazing. It's about good versus evil and it was it was so good. It was so good. I'm gonna I'm gonna reread that book and re-annotate because I loved it a lot. So I love Ted Decker um, just from reading that book alone. Um, 49 is a book with God in the title, 50 is a book with Jesus or Christ in the title, 51 is a book of the Bible you haven't read. So this means to actually go to your Bible, like get your physical Bible and read a book in the Bible you haven't read. So for me, I haven't read Zechariah, I haven't read Nahum, I haven't read um, Habakkuk, um, I have not read Zephaniah, I have not read Joel, Amos. So like the Minor Prophets, I have not read any of those. I've read the entire Pentateuch right the five Torahs, five tour the torah i've read that um i've read the gospels except for matthew um i've read some of the letters i've read psalms i've read proverbs so i wouldn't be able to pick those i would most likely have to pick one of the prophets to read so we have that um and then the last one is a book of your choice so any book you want to read as long as it's faith-based you can read that um so yeah that was a lot of prompts i know lots of prompts um but again everything will be listed on my blog if you want more information about that so again it's just a 52 week reading challenge um this can coincide with the faith reads readathon that we're going to be doing if you want it to but it doesn't have to but this is definitely a year-long challenge that you can partake in or you can just use it to give yourself personal recommendations or find new books to read um I'm excited for this. Like I said, I'm not going to have a set TBR for this. I think that's what happened last year is that I wanted a TBR specifically, but I ain't paying no mind. So for this year, I'm going to be mindful that when I do my monthly wrap ups, I'm going to look at the books that I've read and see if I can cross off any of these prompts. I'm going to try because I'm me. I'm going to try to tackle all 52 prompts, all 52. Now, that doesn't mean I'm going to read 52 Christian books because they're I probably won't um, I'm still trying to get there with my Christian reading um, I still do read a lot more secular than I do Christian books but the Lord is definitely changing my taste in reading because when I I went on my Goodreads and I just happened to be browsing through all the books that I've read um, and back when I started Goodreads was about 2013 2014 I had read a lot of erotic novels um, and if you don't know what erotic novels are they're basically romances that deal with nothing but sex um i read a lot of those like i was shocked you guys honestly um how, about how many i read um and as the years progressed i started to see that i started changing up my reading even to this day i i read them but i don't read them i don't even think i don't i don't even know the last time i read a book like that honestly um it's, it's been a few months um do i have some books that i want to read like that of course but I haven't read them as much as I used to, which I'm very proud of. Um, the Lord is definitely changing my taste in reading, which I love. Um, I'm reading a lot more fantasy novels now than I was reading romances. And the romance novels that I do read are not heavy with sexual content. Um, so I'm very excited to see, like, when I saw visually saw the progression of my reading taste, um, especially when I started incorporating Christian reads, 
I was like astounded by like what God was doing. And that might seem like a small thing for you guys, but for someone who's been reading erotic novels since a young age, um, a young age, <laughs> young, um, since ooh, middle school or about seventh, eighth grade, I started reading erotic novels. Um, yeah. And that was just because it was normal. You know, me and my friends would just pick up the books, read them and call it a day. They weren't, like, anything enticing or anything like that. Like, they didn't entice us, but they were just cool books to read at the time that made us cool. So, that's what we read. And for someone, like I said, who's been reading those type of novels for a long time. Because urban fiction novels, if you don't know what urban fiction novels, um, back in the, back in my time at least, I don't know what it was like for you guys. But back in, like, the 90s and early 2000s, urban fiction novels were, like, those novels written by black authors that included gang violence and drug violence. Drug violence? Is that a word? Gang violence, drugs, and sex and things like that. And, you know, that stuff was cool. So that, I read books like that by, like, Zane and Omar Tyree. Um, so books like that were, like, interesting to me at a young age. And then I got older and then I found erotic novels and things like that. Like, my reading tastes have changed tremendously and I'm very proud of that for myself because those were literally the only books I read. Strictly read. Um, but now when I look at my bookshelves and I look at the books that I own, including my biblical fiction, Christian fiction shelf, I'm just like, God is changing my taste, like, completely and I'm loving it. Um, it ain't completely gone, like I said, because every now and then I get a little, like, alright, I need to read one of my books. But I'm I'm really impressed and just grateful by the changes that are happening. And I feel like doing both this readathon as well as if you guys don't know what readathon I'm talking about, just get the eye on the screen, but it's a Faith Reads readathon I'm gonna be hosting in January. But along with this fifty two weeks of intentional reading. Cause I I definitely want my reading to be intentional. I don't want it to just be for fun anymore. I love reading for fun, obviously. But I also want to be intentional in making sure that I'm edifying my spirit and not edifying my flesh. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. So if you want to download this, you can, it'll be linked down below. Um, just go to the blog and then on the blog post, it'll have a download now button and you can just download it like that. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I don't think there's anything else I have to say. So again, thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, liking this video. If you are not subscribed, subscribe to the family. And if you are subscribed, click the bell to say notified. <laughs> and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.